Okay, this is raking number three. And this time, I really am going to use clear. Uh, this is the same 1108 Irid, uh, 1408, uh, 24, 224. I forgot that. I'll look it up. Anyhow, this is what it looks like before it's capped with another irid. And here it is capped, the other irid face down. Okay, another night to wait and see what happens. Okay, this is beginning of raking number three. It just came out of the kiln to see what my colors are going to look like. This is on the top of the table. Now I'm going to hold it up to the light so you can see what the colors are going to be like. So it turns out the clear is better than I thought it was going to be. So stay tuned for the next chapter. Here's the schedule. The first schedule was just to fix glass in place. The second schedule is for the actual raking. Okay, here's the transparent one. Looking pretty good. I'm going to take it off the board, maybe and see how bad I've got to clean. I have a lot of cleaning to do, but I believe I'm going to like it. I'll let you know after I get it trimmed up. Okay, this is how I decide how I'm going to trim my pieces. I have all these templates that I've made, I find that it'll look different in the different shape. I won't make any decision now, but I'll show you. See here? Not very exciting. Ah, this is more the right size for the shape. And again, I can move it to pick up colors I'm interested in. And remember those greens were circles. And there's a neat circle. Uh, I don't know. Possibilities. Now that's too small. We lose too much. Okay, that's what I use to decide what shape I want my raking to come out in. Um, it blocks part of it. Then I have to take it to mark it off the shape I've chosen, and go to the tile saw, trim it up, and then it has to go back in the kiln to fire polish the cut marks. Okay, uh, we're down to the wire on this piece. This is the one that was clear. I said at first I wasn't going to do it, then I couldn't stand it and did it. Uh, you saw the template. It's cut. It's been fire polished. Now I'm going to hang it from this point right here. 
I measured down equally from this tip in order to get the center. Then I put over the top of the magic marker a wax made from Vaseline and toilet ring to make it stiff enough that it won't go anywhere but it it holds the dot because we're doing it with water and if you don't the dot will wash off and you'll forget where you were. Now I'm using a flex drill that I got at Harbor Freight and a burr which is rounded that I think has enough diamond left on it to at least start this hole. Uh, I'm going to have to step down where I can get the foot pad. What did I do with the water? And I'm going to put on my earmuffs. Apparently the greatest physical problem that uh, glass, especially fusers, have is with their hearing. Because all these gadgets make so much noise. Have a sponge in hand. Remember, we don't want to. I won't hurt that. See, it's not going to wash off. The water won't stay on that wax. Have to do this with my left foot, or it won't work. Okay, it's working. See the powder? Now this is at least two thicknesses right here. So it's going to take a while. That's Need to be careful because I certainly don't want to break it at this point. See, I'm not getting that white powder anymore. You see, the diamonds on the very tip are wrong. So I'm angling it. You notice I'm cooling the drill bit, too. I'm going to change bits. It's too slow. You bet. And you bet. This ought to speed things up a little.
come through. There's O. Now what I'll do is attach a wire and put some sort of little ornament on the top for decoration and it'll hang by a single strand. Not bad. Thanks for watching.